নমস্কার খাস খবর বাংলা ওয়ান এবং মানভূম উত্তরণের উদ্যোগে যে অনলাইনে ক্লাস চলছে বিগত কয়েকদিন ধরে আজকে আমাদের কাছে উপস্থিত রয়েছেন রঘুনাথপুর ওয়ানের ভিডিও স্যার অনির্মার মণ্ডল আজ তোমাদেরকে ইংলিশ ক্লাস করাবে আসুন স্যার Hello my dear students I hope I am audible to you myself Oliver Mondol video run up to one and uh, today I am going to teach you sea fever which is already included in your syllabus by John Meshfield so uh, I am writing the name of the poem So this will be yeah. our today's topic and before starting I would like to say something that is uh, this is this is poetry so uh, what do you mean by poetry or what is poetry so uh, in a sense or in some words we may define poetry like this we may define poetry like this this is although it uh, it don't have any relevance with the topic but as you are reading a poetry or or you are or we are uh, going to prepare for a poetry poetry we should uh, know this that poetry is something we call this that spontaneous overflow of exaggerated emotions so just like our today's topic will be sea fever and whether it is poetry or prose the first thing that we will keep in mind that is you should go through the text very very carefully focusing on each and every word so likewise today we will go through the poetry and focusing on each and every word so before starting i would like to introduce john meshfield suppose uh, i i would ask all of you to hold this this bliss or your textbook so just you can see that in some blue lines here it is written about john meshfield and in the second paragraph it is written that the poem speaks of the excitement the poet feels at the anticipation of a sea voyage the passionate description of the seascape reveals the eternal desire of man to seek the splendor of nature so the poetry is described in just two sentences so this is the main theme of the poetry so uh, let us go forward with the poetry first of all as you can see the poetry has three stanzas or the number stanza number 1 stanza number 2 and stanza number 3 and if we look at the rhyming scheme or the if we look at the rhyme it is the rhyme is something like this this is the rhyme rhyming pattern suppose in first sentence there is sky it ends with sky and the second sentence ends with by so actually sky and by we are rhyming sky with by 
and in each and every sentence you can see this rhyming pattern in each and every stanza it is the rhyming pattern a a b b we may conclude that in this the the whole poem is goes like this so let us start with the text and as i said that this means we will go through the text very carefully focusing on each and every word so i am just i would like all of you or rather i would request all of you to hold up this book and we should start reading i am starting with the first stanza the poet in the first stanza is stating that i must go down to the seas again to the lonely sea and the sky i am repeating i must go down to the seas again to the lonely sea and the sky in the first line of the first stanza the poet wishes to go down to the sea to go for a sea voyage and he wishes to see the lonely sea and the sky lonely sky once again here here the poet in this poem is personifying the sea as if sea is a person and all i ask is a tall ship and a star to steer high by, her by so uh, we will focus on some of the words the first word that we will focus that is steer so what does steer mean steer means that to direct or to give directions so the poet is willing to go down to the seas again he is willing to see the lonely sea and sky and all the small thing that he wanted that is is a tall ship and a star and what for is the tall ship the tall ship the tall ship will be used as a carrier by which the poet will meet the sea and star what is the use of the star the use of the star that is the star will guide him it is clearly stated steer means to guide also so the so a star will guide the poet in his sea voyage so uh, as you as you know that many of us uh, knew this very well that this star star is being used as to for for directions we can uh, use a star to direct or to find ways suppose at night time suppose at day time suppose uh, you can imagine that at day time there is sun in the sky so uh, we can we can uh, means we can look out for the directions by looking at the sun but what will we do at the night time so at night time our one and only one and only way is the star by looking at the stars or by looking at the directions of the of the stars we can we can conclude that in which way we are going so let's come to the third line of the first stanza and the wheels kick and the wind's song and the white sails shaking so the poet is imagining i'm i'm writing means uh, suppose we will break up the whole poem into short phrases or into short words suppose one word i have already given you that is steer so let's come to the next things that is wheels kick wind's song and white sail so these are the three phrases that we are getting so uh, by this wheel kick what is a wheel a wheel is used to to go for the ship so this wheel the poet can feel the wheel kick the energy that is coming out of, of out of a wheel and the wind song and what is the wind song the do you think that the wind is able to able to 
able to sun or not no but the poet the, the wind is never never been able to sing a song but the poet is imagining as if the winds the the flowing of the winds or the blowing of the winds is creating a sound and that sound is here calculated or imagined as song and white sail so what is the use of the sail in a ship the the sail is used in a ship to move if the ship is on the move then the sail is used to the, to catch the winds and to go forward and a gray mist on the sea's face and a gray dawn breaking so this one two more phrases that i want to add that is gray mist and gray dawn so it is very likely that the poet will start his journey at day daybreak means at the breaking of dawn and at the breaking of dawn this gray mist is found on his on the sea's face so what is a what is a mist so uh, when suppose when we add color gray is a color when we add color to any natural phenomena it implies personification once again so whenever when the mist is gray or when the dawn is gray the poet is once again personifying these natural phenomena so the poet is so um, to, to sum up the first stanza i must i'm i'm reading once again that i must go down to the seas again to the lonely sea and the sky and all i ask is a tall ship and a star to steer hard by and the wheels kick and the winds song and the white sails shaking and a gray mist on the sea's face and a gray dawn breaking so the poet is restless the poet is restless to go to the sea once again so it means that it is not his first voyage he has gone for sea voyage earlier so he can he can feel the restlessness within himself to go down to the seas once again and that lonely sea and the lonely sky is once again he is willing to see and this he wants a tall ship and a star to guide him in his voyage and he could clearly imagine or he could clearly listen to this three phrases that is wheel kick wind song and white sail and he will start his journey at gray dawn or at daybreak when the upper surfaces of the sea will be covered by gray mist mist as you know mist are this droplets of water jake bangla amra kuwasha bole thaki so this gray mist will be found on the upper surface of the sea so our first stanza is over i hope you all can understand and if there is any question you can uh, ask us in whatsapp and we will uh, give you feedback through whatsapp only so uh, let's come to the second stanza the poet is telling that i must the, the first line of the second stanza is again starting with the same thing that i must go down to the seas again it again implies that the irre irresistible call the poet can feel within himself that for the call of the running tide so what is the call the call is of the running tide so this is a wild call and a clear call that may not be denied so uh, the poet is telling that the call of the tide is so powerful or so enchanting that no one is able to no one means in fact the poet himself is not able to ignore or not able to hide within himself the emotions that are coming out 
the call that he is receiving or the call that he could listen to that is a wild call wild call means something irresistible a call that cannot be registered or that cannot be ignored and all i ask again the poet is asking for something is a windy day with the white clouds flying the poet is poet is asking for a windy day wind with the word windy comes from the word wind so what is the need of the wind the wind is needed to sail if the if a ship is if a ship is sailing wind is the most important thing because at that time means we are talking of a time when uh, there are no this means we are this this poem is the poet is belong to the 19th century the poet belongs to the 19th century so at that time there were there were no electric ships or some this fuel driven ships at the time those those ships were sail driven or wind driven better to say so that was that is why wind is the most important thing to steer a ship that's why the poet is asking for a windy day and on that windy day when he will be out for a voyage the white clouds will be flying why the white clouds will be, will be flying the white white clouds will fly because because of the wind the wind will steer the not steer not only the ship but also the cloud and the flung spray and the blown spume and the sea gulls crying so once again we are getting some phrases so once again we are getting some phrases that is flung spray and the blown spume spume means foam spume means foam so so when the poet has has gone for a voyage he could feel that the splash splash of water into his face or into his body that was that that is why flung spray spray we you know you know what is spray we sometimes spray water so that spray flung spray and the blown spume means when the water is the the ship suppose you can imagine that that the ship is sailing clearing the waterways and the the waves or the tides which are which are being thrashed with the ship it is automatically creating a foam the poet is imagining the the waves or the tides which are being thrashed into the ships thrashed with the ship it is clear it is, it is creating a foam and that is why it is it is creating a splash of water and the poet at the same time could also hear that the sea gulls crying seagulls means jake amra banglay boli shongkochil so we could uh, imagine the the scenario that the poet is out for a voyage and he could see that the seagulls are roaming over his head and their cries are clearly heard to the poet and this flung spray and blown spume blown this foam or the he could feel the splash of water into his face or in his body so let us sum up the second stanza i am reading out the second stanza once again i must go down to the seas again for the call of the running tide is a wild call and a clear call that may not be denied 
and all I ask is a windy day with the white clouds flying and the flung spray and the blown spume and the seagulls crying. So the poet once again at the beginning of the first stanza, the poet once again reiterates the fact that he could not resist the call to go out to the sea and the call of the running tide is so irresistible that may not be denied that is a fact and this windy day and the white clouds white clouds are accompanying the poet and the wind is accompanying the ship to sail and this the he could feel the splash of water into his face or into his body and and those tides or waves creating creating a foam and at the same time he could hear the seagulls crying let us come to the third stanza i must go down to the seas again so uh, one thing i am reiterating once again that is the poet the third stanza also starts with the same line that means throughout the poem in means in every stanza we are being means we are be, we are being uh, how, means we are being listened or we are being being shown that his irresistible desire to go out for a sea voyage i must go down to the seas again to the vagrant gypsy life once again i am uh, getting phrases so we are getting two more words that is vagrant and gypsy what is vagrant vagrant means who is a nomad a person a vagrant person <coughs> roams from one place to another he doesn't he doesn't have a home or a fixed place to stay and gypsy gypsy is a nomadic tribe of the asia so we can say that nomad people can be termed as as gypsy nomad people can be termed as gypsy so uh, what the poet desires or the poet asks for a life he he does not ask for a life which is well settled he asks for a or he desires for a nomad life he asks for a vagrant life or and however it differentiate the poet from the common man so when a what does a common man desire a common man desires always a settled life a peaceful life but here the poet keeping aside all the peace that lies at our homes the poet asks or yearns for a vagrant gypsy life je i that the poet is telling that i don't want a peaceful life i want to go for a vagrant a nomad a gypsy life to the gulls way and the whales way where the winds like a wetted knife so again we are getting some phrases so my dear friends we are getting phrases once again so uh, as we know that the poet has already stated clearly in the first line of the third stanza that i want to lead a nomad life so this gulls so as he is not asking for a common man's life or show he deviates from a common man's way and he chooses or wishes to follow the way of a gal 
or the way of a whale and where this widget widget means sharpened or where where cold winds cold chilly winds where cold chilly winds cuts his flesh and bone like a knife he is willing to go to far flung places where he chooses where the gulls roam about where the whales roam about and where the cold winds cuts his flesh and bone as a as a sharp sharpened knife <clears throat> so uh, let's come to the third line of the third stanza and all i ask is a merry yearn and from a laughing fellow rover the word yarn means tail and the word fellow rover means fellow sailor so again the poet poet is asking something the poet is asking is a merry tale from a laughing fellow rover a cheer he is asking for a cheerful cheerful tale of sea voyage from a fellow sailor and quiet sleep and a sweet dream when the long tricks over here the word trick mean journey the word trick mean journey so uh, i'm summing up the third stanza i must go down to the seas again to the vagrant gypsy life to the gulls way and the whales way where the winds like a wetted knife and all i ask is a merry yearn from a laughing fellow river fellow fellow rover and quiet sleep and a sweet dream when the long tricks over so the poet is asking for a vagrant gypsy life so uh, let us sum up the first stanza the poet is asking for a nomad gypsy life which deviates from a common man's life he doesn't want to settle down and he rather by not choosing a common man's way rather he is choosing the way a seagull roams the way is a whale roams and where he could feel the cold wind is cutting his flesh and bones like a sharpened knife and again he is asking something he is asking for a merry tale from his fellow sailor who has gone for a voyage when the journey is over here the journey means life when the life me is over he wants a quiet sleep and a sweet dream and this is this quiet sleep and a sweet dream implies death so the poet here this just mark my words the poet here throughout the poem or throughout the sea voyage the poet is comparing the sea voyage to our life and when our life ends and when when death embraces us the poet wants a quiet sleep and a sweet dream after listening to some cheerful story of sea voyage from a fellow sailor and here the poem ends so let us summing up that as we have as you know that we have gone through the text so carefully and i just i i must tell you something or rather i would i would suggest you something that while suppose suppose if this is your text if it is a prose or if it is a poem whatever it is always go through your, through your text very carefully if it is a prose just go through it or it is a it is a poem just go through it very carefully means focusing on each and every sentence and each and every word suppose what is the purpose the purpose is that you will get to know about 
different words your vocabulary or rather your stock of words will be enhanced by this suppose suppose, suppose uh, for example in this poem we we get to know some words that is trick which means journey yearn which means stay just trick is the synonym of journey so just like we uh, we get to know about vagrant 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 means nomad and we get to know about know about gypsy and who are the gypsy people they are the nomad nomad people gypsy is a tribe of asia and they doesn't have a place to settle down and they roam from one place to another it is their way of lifestyle and we have got this word also seagull and spume means foam so this so before uh, suppose let us sum some of the poem so that the poet john mashfield it is very clear from the poem that the, as i as i said at the beginning of my session that john mash mashfield is a is a is a poet and he he personifies the sea in this case and he urges to go to a sea voyage and he cannot resist himself and he is he is asking himself that repeatedly that why he is not in sea voyage what he is do, what, what he is doing in land what he why what he is doing what on earth is he doing by resting he is a restless man he wants to go to sea voyage and he could clearly hear the wild call from the sea and the sea gulls the chilly wind or the flying clouds all these are symbols he could imagine in his mind and all these are things which are attracting the poet that come on a sea voyage let us go that's why he is he is telling ourselves telling telling our uh, telling us or he is telling rather he is telling himself that i must go down to the sea so pressing upon this word i means he clearly indicates his character that he is a seafarer or means sea voyage he he is rather interested in sea voyage rather settling down so uh, now again i am telling that if you have any confusion regarding this this poem you can ask us through whatsapp and one more thing this this whole of the whole of the poem just go through every line and every word of it so that you will get a clear idea of what the poet is willing to say or what the poet desires to express through his words so now let us come to the comprehension exercises i hope uh, whatever uh, there is you have taken taken uh, note of it all these things which is written over this white board so i am removing all of it as we are going to enter the comprehension part
so let us come to the first comprehension exercises 1a as you can see if you are keeping the book with you 1a the, the the question that is being asked that is the poet asks for a sale the color of which would be white if you could just look at the third sentence of the first stanza that is it is written that and the wheels kick and the wind song and the white sails shaking so the color of the sail is white let us come to the second second part or b while going, going down to the sea the poet wants to hear the crying of very evident seagull it is mentioned just look at the last line of the second stanza and the flung spray and the blown spume and the seagulls crying let us come to the let us come to the point number c the wind on the sea is like a wetted the answer is knife it is clearly mentioned in the second line of the third stanza to the girl's way and the whale's way where the winds like a wetted knife so again i am repeating the poet asks for a sail the color of which would be white the answer is white while going down to the sea the poet wants to hear the crying of the answer is seagull the wind on the sea is like a wetted the answer is knife i hope all of you have taken note of it for those who have, who have missed i am again repeating the first answer the answer of a is white the answer of b is seagulls and the answer of c is knife let us come to the let us come to number 2 it is uh, it is being asked that state whether the following statements are true or false provide sentences or phrases or words in support of your answer so we may provide sentences or phrases or words to support our claim whether it is true or false so first of all let us determine that whether it is true or false to steer the ship ship the poet needs the moon is it true or false it is clearly false because let us go back to the poem once again this uh, just focus on the second line of the first stanza and all i ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by so it will it will the moon is incorrect it will be star so the statement is false and for the we we can quote this part
a star to steer her by you may also quote the full sentence or you may not because here it is asked that we just we, we may quote a may quote words or phrases or a full sentence number b Number B, the call of the running tide is wild and clear. It is true because just focus on the second line of the second stanza is a wild call and a clear call that may not be denied. So we may quote this. A clear call that may not be denied. A clear call that may not be denied is the supporting phrase that we can use here. So again I am repeating, to steer the ship the poet needs the moon, it is false because the poet wants a star to steer her by. It is a supporting sentence, a supporting phrase. The call of the running tide is wild and clear, it is true. And our supporting phrase here is a clear call that may not be denied. I hope that all of you have taken note of it. So I'm removing and let us come to the second third part of C. The poet is going out to the sea for the first time. This statement is false. How could we know the statement is false? Just focus on the focus on any of any one of the first line. First focus on the first line of any of the stanza. Where the poet is telling I must, the supporting phrase will be, I must go down to the seas again. Again means something or an incident which has, an incident which has happened earlier. The poet is telling again. So that means the poet has gone for a sea voyage earlier. So that is why he is again willing or wishes to go to the sea voyage.
let us come to the uh, let us come to number 3 during what time of the day does the poet wish to go down to the seas In this case, suppose when you are about to write an, write an answer, you must focus on the question very carefully. Just focus on the tense which is being used in the question. What tense is used in the question that is present tense? How who do you know that the question there is a does? And which means it is a present tense. So just we should write the answer keeping in mind always the question. So the answer will be the poet wishes. Why wishes? Because this is singular and that is and does is being used. So just we are adding es after wish which is the verb here the poet wishes to go down to the seas at what time let us go back to the poem once again as you all remember that and a great just focus on the fourth line of the first stanza and a gray gray dawn breaking the poet wishes to go down to the seas at the breaking of dawn the poet wishes to go down to the seas at the breaking of dawn the question is one liner so our answer will also be one liner i'm again repeating the answer the poet wishes to go down to the seas at the breaking of dawn Our next question is What kind of day does the poet prefer for sailing? So again keeping in mind the question, we will write the answer. The poet prefers The poet prefers Let us go back to the poem, keeping in mind the poem always. Again I am reiterating my word because you should you better to say you must follow the text very carefully if the text is within your grip you are able to answer any of the questions so th that poet just just focus on just focus on the th third line of the second stanza and all i ask is a windy day with the white clouds flying the poet prefers a windy day with 
द वाइट क्लाउड्स फ्लाइंग फॉर सेलिंग सो और आंसर विल बी द पोएट प्रेफर्स ए विंडी डे विथ द वाइट क्लाउड्स फ्लाइंग फॉर सेलिंग The answer is one liner as the question is one liner. Let us come to the third question. so our third question is what does the poet prefer to hear from a fellow rover the poet prefers to hear from a fellow rover so the answer is again hidden in the poem that is and all i ask is a merry yarn from a laughing fellow rover so the poet prefers to hear from a fellow rover a cheerful story of sea voyage the poet prefers to hear from his fellow rover a cheerful story of sea voyage this will be the answer i hope every one of you has taken note of it let us come to the grammar part so uh, we can see on board that is a that is an exclamatory sentence what a shocking sight so we are uh, directed to change this exclamatory sentence into an assertive sentence so uh, i will tell you in detail when i will uh, take up the grammar part that uh, what type of sentences are there so just for just today for the purpose of this this comprehension and grammar we just uh, need we are just focusing on solving the set grammar in use what is what is being uh, printed in your syllabus so uh, when we are we we change an exclamatory 
to an assertive sentence we gener we generally gen use and a verb or adverb whatever you say we generally use an adverb with it So, uh, what is being replaced with this word very? So, it is a very shocking sight. What is shocking sight? It is a very shocking sight. Let's come to the second part. This is an this is a simple sentence, and we are directed to change this sentence into complex into a complex one. Look, uh, in a simple sentence, there is no clause being used. So we are breaking up and. At the same time, we will also suppose this is noun, success. So we will turn it into verb. So this part of his success, we are breaking it by putting that. I am sure that he will. succeed i am sure that he will succeed so generally this is a complex sentence we have success it is noun we have transformed this into a verb that is succeed Let us come to number C. It is a complex sentence and we are directed. Why it is a complex sentence? It is a complex sentence because we have used this not only and but also. That is why it is a complex sentence. So we are going to convert this complex sentence into simple. So, uh, Snigda is brave as well as wise, as well as means and. 
So Snigdha is brave as well as wise. We can use and also. Snigdha is brave and wise. It is a simple sentence. We have converted the complex sentence into simple one. After this, uh, we are entering writing activities. So uh, this will be your homework. I'll just I'll be just be briefing you a bit. That is, uh, here we are we are being asked to write a summary of it, and that is also within hundred words. So. How to write a summary? I am just giving a free ins few insertions that always keep in mind the word limit. If your words are exceeded, then it will be counted as a discredit. So, uh, but don't worry because in a summary, if 100 words are given, it is enough. We can summarize the, we can, we can summarize a press, a, a prose or a part of it less than, in less than 100 words. So, just also keep in mind that uh, always stick to the word limit. Never cross it. Next thing that do not copy the text only. Do not copy the text. Suppose what is given to you in summary just do not means always try not to copy the text because it gives us an impression which is bitter that this person or that person this just simply copying the text so try to use your own words as much as possible and always this try to use your own words suppose for example, this <coughs> I'm just going through the summary. Egyptian kings are called pharaohs. Tutankhamen was an Egyptian king who ruled between 1332 BC, 1332 to 1323 BC. Tutankhamen was very young when he became the king. He was only 10 years old when he ascended the throne. He was a son of Akhenaten, who was also a pharaoh. So here in detail everything is written about Tutankhamen so we may start like this that Suppose just by writing a few words, we have already compiled two sentences that Egyptian kings are called pharaohs, Tutankhamun was an Egyptian king who ruled between 1332 
to 1323 BC. So just, just like this, we have to club the information. But do not miss any information. This will be my third suggestion. Do not miss any information. You need to put all the informations which are being provided to you in the summary. You, you must put all the informations. You are not supposed to miss out any of it. And the fourth part is write in short sentences. Use clause if necessary. So this will be my four suggestions for you that keep in mind the word limit. Do not copy the text only. Do not miss any information. Write in short sentences. Use clause if necessary. So this will be the four suggestions that you need to follow in summarizing a passage or a prose. And the next thing that is being given, you are directed to write a newspaper reports and that is also within 100 words. So uh, just copy, if you want, you can copy this thing, what is written in the board. These are the four instructions from my site that I am once again repeating, that is keep in mind the word limit, number one, number two, do not copy the text only, number three, write in short sentences, use clause if necessary and do not miss any information. Number four, these are the four suggestions that I, I would like to offer to you. Let us come to the next part that is newspaper report. <clears throat> we all have newspapers at our homes. We uh, every day, every morning, newspapers come to our houses. So, this uh, newspaper reports. How to write a newspaper reports? Here are also some tricks. The mode of a, of a reporting is passive mode. What is a passive mode? The passive mode is past perfect tense will be used mostly if we are not quoting anyone and you are not supposed to quote anyone in newspaper reports you are not supposed to quote anyone so all we we are we, are, we should always use past perfect tense or present perfect tense and but the most important thing is this passive mode in a newspaper report if you are not quoting anyone, you should write in passive mode and using this past perfect tense and present perfect tense wherever necessary. And next thing is that suitable heading. So you must give a suitable heading to your newspaper reports suppose you can take you can take any newspaper you can take any newspaper at your hand and just if you look at any of the reports you will find that there is a heading in every case in each and every case there is a heading so uh, you should you are required to put a suitable heading when you are writing a newspaper report and keep in mind the 
time limit uh, the word limit also in this case also word limit should not be forgotten so uh, just here is a newspaper report within 100 words on the incident of burglary in a flat in Kolkata using the following points the points uh, the points are being provided to you and this this is this is you can you can quote the same thing and it is it should not be a complete sentence the heading the heading of a newspaper report must not be a complete sentence suppose in this case we can say burglary in a flat at Beniapukur. Beniapukur is a place in Kolkata. So suppose burglary in a flat at Beniapukur. So this is not a complete sentence. But and your heading needs not to be completed. Your heading should not be a complete sentence. It, it must be must be an incomplete sentence in this regard so friends and my dear students I'm summing it up for today so before ending my class every day I will give you Before ending my class, every day I will give you two idioms which you will use in your writing skills. So our today's two idioms are number one that is cats and dogs so uh, what are idioms idioms are just like we wear ornaments why do we, we wear ornaments we wear ornaments in order to uh, make us look good so just just like it when you are writing a passage or you are writing a paragraph you are writing a letter you are writing a pressy whatever you, you are writing just for ornamentation of your writing or for enhancement of your writing skill you need to enhance your vocabulary you need to uh, means you need, you need to practice writing skills a bit for a bit longer times and you need to gather up words or idioms which will ornament your writing so uh, cats and dogs it means there's a meaning to every idiom so cats and dogs means heavily so a, an idiom is in use when we put it in a sentence so just like cats and dogs it is raining cats and dogs cats and dogs means heavily It is raining cats and dogs. We often say that it is raining heavily outside. But rather, uh, from now on, now on, we will say that it is raining cats and dogs. Some people mistakenly put like. It is raining like cats and dogs. But it is totally incorrect. It is raining cats and dogs. And cats and dogs means heavily. If you replace cats and dogs, the proper word for cats and dogs will be heavily. So, like should not be used. And at sixes and sevens, it means in disorder.
So our sentence is, I entered the room and found everything at sixes and sevens. At sixes and sevens means in disorder. Or something which is disorganized. Or something which we found in disorganized manner. So uh, just our, our last idiom for the day. That is at sixes and sevens. Which means in disorder. And our sentence using that. That idiom is I entered the room and found everything at sixes and sevens. So I am again repeating our two idioms of the day. Cats and dogs which means heavily and at sixes and sevens which means in disorder. So uh, let us. So I am summing up my class for today. So I would urge all of you to stay home because if you stay home you know you are well aware that the whole world is being affected by COVID-19. So if you stay home and if you maintain a few things, just like to wash your hands before eating or while going out for any necess necessary purposes, you should cover your face with a mask or a plain, a plain cover. We, you could be safe from this attack of COVID-19. So my dear students, and friends who are watching me live today i'm calling it a day so stay well and stay safe and we will meet soon just uh, follow my lessons and i'll be available at this this page and be available at manu mutron and in the next in my next class i'll be discussing or i will be taking up grammar skills and just like today we had we had focused on this text so in the in my next class we'll be discussing grammar so friends thank you very much stay well and stay safe Thank you, sir. At the Shundur have explained Gorad Jorno. Our Tomadege Shundur have a Bosalen, sir. Even Tomadege Jaja Home Tax Coralo, Boden Mode, Tumra Barita Shabai practice school. Our Agami Kal, Bidis Chandra Lai, Mosha Babu, Porathe Ashwin, Matumika, both of it. Emoni Adra, Nigon, Nova High School. নমস্কার আজকের এই বিশেষ সেশনের জন্য মানহুম উত্তরণ এবং খাস খবর বাংলার পক্ষ থেকে माननीय সমষ্টি উন্নয়ন অধিকারী গনিরবান মণ্ডল মহাশয়কে আন্তরিক ধন্যবাদ তোমরা এই ক্লাসটা এনজয় করছো আশা করি এবং লকডাউনের পরিস্থিতিতে তোমরা বাড়িতে বসে নিজেদের পড়াশোনাটা যথাসম্ভব চালিয়ে যাও তোমাদের যদি কিছু কোয়েরিজ থাকে আমি আরেকবার রিমাইন্ডার দিচ্ছি আমাদের এই WhatsApp নম্বরে তোমরা তোমাদের সাবজেক্ট ওয়াইজ কোয়েরিজ পাঠাতে পারো যে যে সাবজেক্টের কোয়েরিজ থাকবে এইটাই পাঠাতে পারো তোমরা আমাদের মানভূম উত্তরণের ফেসবুক পেজ বা ইউটিউবে মানভূম উত্তরণের ফেসবুক পেজ বা ইউটিউবে ফেসবুক পেজ এবং ইউটিউবে এই ভিডিওগুলো দেখতে পাবে যা প্রশ্ন থাকবে তোমরা এই নম্বরে WhatsApp করে জানাবে যে কোনো বিষয়ের প্রশ্ন ক্লাস 10 এর জন্য আমরা তার তৎক্ষণাৎ উত্তর দেওয়ার চেষ্টা করব ধন্যবাদ সকলকে শুভ সন্ধ্যা সবাই ভালো থাকো বাড়িতে থাকো এবং সুস্থ থাকো